trying something a little different today. I don't know if it's going to work. You'll have to let me know. Um, trying out a different camera. Playing around with things. Should actually catch me if I move. It's kind of different. I'm going to have to work this all out and see how it's going to work. Um, I've got some stuff right here. You can see my legs, but you can't see my table. Oh, you can't see my legs. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm figuring things out. You can give me my feedback in the comments. Let's look at Genesis 48, and hopefully we're going live right now. All right, so now it came to pass after these things that Joseph was, in, was told, indeed your father is sick, and he took with him uh, his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. Oh, good. Susan said, good morning. I guess I can see. And then my dad's commenting. Okay. I actually didn't even know I'd be able to see comments because I'm actually using my phone for the lives. Or I'm not using my phone to record this. So, hey, new stuff. Trying it out. Um, we'll see how things go. So, there we go. Um, go like this. That's not what I wanted to do. Hey, I'm playing around today. Isn't this fun? Okay. Everyone hear me okay? That's the other question. I'm not using my normal microphone. All right. Your father's sick. And so Jacob was told, look, your son Joseph is coming to you. And Israel strengthened himself and sat upon his bed. Oh, I didn't highlight Israel there. Again, I, I highlight Israel and Jacob in two different colors. I don't have a green highlighter lying around here, I don't think. So I'll have to get that later. But... One thing you'll notice is that um, this Israel Jacob thing. Don't don't make it like it's like gospel. Like it, you know, every time it's Jacob, he's in the flesh, and every time it's Israel, it's he's in the spirit. Um, because any time it talks about the nation and it's speaking more about the promise and the people of Israel, and then right here, you know, Jacob's gonna die, and so in this sense, it's the man is going to eventually pass away. The man is going to be the one that's going to give way. And so, uh, you know, it says, Jacob was told, your son is coming. Israel strengthened himself. And Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me. And it's Bethel. And said to me, behold, I will make you fruitful and multiply you. And I'll make you a multitude of people and give this land to your descendants after you as an everlasting possession. And now you are two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt, are mine. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. Your offspring whom you beget after them shall be yours. They will be called by the name of their brothers in their inheritance. But as for me, when I came to Badan, Rachel died beside me in the, in the land of Canaan on the way, and there was but little distance to go to Ephrath, and I buried her there on the way to Ephrath, that is, Bethlehem. Then Israel saw Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? And Joseph said to his father, These are my sons whom God has given me in this place. And he said, Bring them to me. And, and Israel's I, I, the eyes of Israel were dim, so he could not see. So Joseph brought them near. He kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said to Joseph, I had not thought to see your face, but in fact, God has shown me your offspring. So Joseph brought them beside his knees and bowed down to the earth, his face to the earth. Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand, and Manasseh and his left. Okay, and the idea, it says it here, I'm just paraphrasing now. He brought Ephraim in his right. I know things are reversed for you guys, but to give him to his dad's left. And he took Manasseh in his left hand to give him to his father's right, because Manasseh was the older son and he was the one who was supposed to receive the blessing. And then it says, Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it on Ephraim. So he does this. Israel starts crossing his hands and puts the blessing on Ephraim instead of Manasseh. God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has fed me all my life to this day, the angel who has redeemed me from all evil. Bless the lads. Let my name be upon them and let the, the name of my father, Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into the multitude in the midst of the earth. And so he blesses them. And again, when we look at the 12 tribes of Israel, we don't see a tribe of Joseph. We see the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh. Now, if you go through the Bible, the, the list is sometimes arranged differently. Sometimes Levi's in, sometimes Levi's out. Sometimes Dan is in, sometimes Dan is out. And there's different reasons in every place 
why the names listed are listed. And we can't go over them all today, but just know that when one tribe is in and another's out, it's for a reason. Because really, you've got 14 names to go with. You have the 12 sons of Israel and then the two sons of Joseph. Sometimes Joseph's name is on the list. And so it's just interesting to see how sometimes we get one and not the other. And again, they, they all have their specific interpretation. Well, as we go through the Bible and we cross those lists, we'll try and make note of who's on and who's off. Now, Joseph saw this, right? Verse 17, that his father laid the right hand on Ephraim and it displeased them. So he took his father's hand and removed it from Ephraim's head and put on Manasseh's head. And Joseph said to his father, not so, my father, for this one is a firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. Verse 19, but his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know that, and he shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly, his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his descendants shall become a multitude of nations. So he blessed them that day, saying, By you Israel will bless, saying, May God make you as Ephraim and Manasseh. Thus he set Ephraim before Manasseh. Then Israel said to Joseph, Behold, I am dying, but God will be with you and bring you back to the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given you one portion above your brothers, which I took from the hand of the Amorite with my sword and my bow. And so he's pointing out that uh, Joseph essentially will get the double portion as a favored son. And by a double portion, it's two portions, one to Ephraim, one will go to Manasseh. And so essentially Joseph gets that double portion portion. Now, interesting is that in Moses' time, there was about one and a half, 1 1.6 if you want to get technical, times more people in the tribe of Manasseh than Ephraim. And so for a long time, we don't see this blessing play out. And yet, by the very end, we note that Ephraim becomes the main tribe of the north. And when the ten tribes break north, and Judah and Benjamin and, and other mixes of people essentially are in the south, in Judea or Judah, in the north, the ten tribes, eventually Ephraim, or Ephraim, however you want to say it, um, becomes a, a byword or a, you know, synonymous with the northern tribes. So you'll see prophecies. Um, I want to say Hosea or Amos, it's one of the two or both, where Ephraim, it, he says Ephraim, but it means the entire northern tribes. All of the ten tribes are summarized by Ephraim. And so it's just a reminder. God has a plan and his plan is not always our plan, right? I'm going to switch this whole wide view, short view, wide view, short view. It's bugging me. I don't know if it bugs you. But God has a plan, and it's not always our plan. And so what we find is not only did God, through Israel, not bless the son that Joseph thought would be blessed. So right there we see God has a different plan than our plan. But then next we find that the plan doesn't come to fruition until way later. And Abram had to wait for that child, and everyone else... There's always a waiting game to see God's plan come to fruition. And so in this chapter, it just reminds us that God has a plan, and yet it's not always our plan. And we got to figure out things as we go and just wait on the Lord and trust that God's plan will always happen, and God's plan will come to pass. It's just a matter of when. I hope that helps you guys. All right, God bless you guys. I'm going to play around with this camera thingy. I was reluctant to even try it today, but I thought I'd just go for it. So there we go. All right. You guys take care, and I will see you guys tomorrow. I wonder what button I can click. This one. Ooh, this one. I got it. There we go. Now it'll stop going back and forth, I think. I can just go like this, and I can go like this. Oh, that's kind of a normal view. You like this view? I can make it stop moving. That might be nice.
Let's see here, I can do that too. Let's go like this, like that. Okay, is it not moving anymore? Whoop, I moved it over there. Here I am. <laughs> okay, I'm just playing around now, but let's go like that. That looks good. Are you happy? I'm happy. All right. I was just messing around with the camera now that I have the opportunity. Sorry for you guys stuck watching this. On the bright side, just for people to know one of the reasons why we opted for this camera is in the very near future, I should be able to do the live stream from my profile, from the church Facebook page, from YouTube, and on the church app slash website all at the same time. That way people who don't have Facebook could jump in and watch with us. So that's my intent. All right, guys, God bless you. I will see you guys around.